So I'm talking about something that everyone dreads to hear about depression. So what is depression? I would define depression as a mental illness where people can't appreciate sunset, which is really well said by Harvard professor Robert Spolsky. And having depression was probably the hardest thing I would ever have to go through. And I always like to think about where it all started. As a kid, I was a happy kid. Starting from kindergarten, I was always smiling, I was always happy. I always stuck by two friends, even though two isn't a lot, but they were my best friends. I would like to say I remember their names, but I really don't. And I thought going into primary school, I would have a lot, have a lot of fun making new friends, but that wasn't the case. As you can see, I wasn't the most prettiest kid. I wasn't skinny. I was actually considered overweight and I was bullied a lot by it. And during when I was about 10, my parents ha had a divorce. Their divorce didn't affect me, but it did affect me in school because people were bullying me for it. And I had to switch schools because of it. But switching schools m made it worse because I was put into a school in a really small town and people there were so close-minded. I had to go through horrible teachers and horrible students. Everyone there made fun of me and everyone there was really, really rude. And the teachers were even worse because I was a delinquent child. I refused to do any homework. My, my grades were all really, really bad. And that caused me to get into a lot of trouble with not just my teachers, but also my parents. And my mom would push me to my dad, but my dad had no capability to take care of me because he was working almost 24-7 and he hardly had the finance to even bring me up. And the teachers were even worse. The teachers would put all of the children they considered bad into a storage unit under the, under the stage for the entire class period. And it was probably about 30 minutes or like an hour or so. And when you tell people these things, they say that you're lying, that it isn't true, but they don't know the truth. But at that time, I was just a kid in primary school and all the bullying, when I told people, they said that it was just kids being kids. You know, they were just having fun. It wasn't real. It, it wasn't bullying. And obviously that didn't affect me because I was just only a kid. I thought that, yeah, it's true. They were just being kids. It, it didn't matter. But things got worse after I went through high school. I started being really, I was always angry. I was always upset. When I was 13, I had anorexia because I was always trying to achieve that thin body that everyone wants because people were making fun of me for being fat. And then at that same year, something horrible happened. My nephew, which I haven't even met before, had passed away. He had a very difficult birth and that really affected me really badly. When I was 14, I was having body issues because of dysphoria, being trans, and that was really, really hard on me because as the, at that time I was going through puberty and many things didn't make sense to me because I didn't understand why my friends were, would find even though they were going through puberty, but I wasn't because I didn't understand what dysphoria was. And that wasn't the worst part yet. I started cutting because I needed something to feel like I was in control. And when I was 16, things went downhill from that. I, I tried suicide, which is something I don't like sharing, but it is the truth. I tried to kill myself, which seeing me still here, I obviously didn't succeed. Because being gay, being pansexual, being polyamorous, uh, polyamorous and being trans was difficult in an Asian culture. And that took a really huge hit on my mental health in general. And this year, I'm finally 17 and I'm almost 18, I can make decisions now on my own. And I'm ready to start over. I'm trying to forget everything from the past. I'm trying to restart my whole life again. And it's almost the end of the year now and I feel like I made no progress. I've started this app that I've been using that records my mood. I tried every single day to record my mood, but as you can see, it didn't really work out. Because when I'm depressed or when I'm feeling angry, sometimes I can't even move. I can't even get up in the morning. 
So from the, I made it into sort of a bar chart to sort of see how my mood was throughout the years. I tried recording as much as I could, but as you can see, I'm usually my moods are usually sad. My moods are usually angry, anger, and unknown meaning that I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was just upset. And there was days that I would write down journals, just a little bit about how I felt and why I was feeling that way. I was always frustrated, stressed out. I always wanted to leave this place, or I just wanted to leave my home. I just didn't want to be here. This forever was hard for me. And sometimes I just felt like disappearing. Everything was difficult for me this year, even though I didn't think it would get worse, but it did. But even though everything was being hard on me, I had something to motivate me, which was my niece, Jupiter. She was literally everything I needed in my life right now. Whenever I felt down or whenever I felt like I needed something to boost me up, I would always turn to my niece, Jupiter. She is the motiva my motivation right now for me to keep on moving. Why I would rely on her is because I feel like I can rely on myself to make decisions anymore. I can rely on myself to promise that I won't wake up tomorrow dead. And I rely on her because I don't want my parents or my family to need to explain to her why she's missing a family member. And thank God I did not kill myself when I was 16 and 15 because I got to see her first birthday this year. And as you can see, she was really happy about it. She had a lot of fun and I had a lot of fun with her too. I like to point out the fact that is sometimes people don't get someone to rely on. Like, I may not have gotten her to rely on sometimes. And that's okay because you need to know how to fight for yourself. And I've been trying to learn how to stand up for myself right now because I can be putting all my life just on her. She is only nearly one and some, anything could happen. And you know, you can predict the future. I like to point out that you can kill your current self without killing yourself. And what I mean by that is by just cutting your hair or just running away, sometimes that helps a lot because you may not like your current self right now, but in the future, you may like what you see. And I'm just glad that I found someone to rely on, someone to be there for me. And this is actually just one of my favorite videos of her. The volume is really soft. She is literally everything I ever needed. She is a ray of sunshine. She's always smiling. She's always laughing. She reminds me of when I was a kid. I like to end it by just ex saying that, you know, things can be difficult and as cliche as it is, things do get better. Thank you.